Hi, I'm Rick Pauley with Pauley Girl Fast Pitch. Today I'm going to talk about a little uh, hitting technique that I think is really important for uh, everybody at every age level, every skill level to get a good comprehension of. And that is maybe what is the most important thing in hitting. And in our opinion here at Pauley Girl Fast Pitch, we think it's what we would call our launch to contact time on our swing. And I don't want you to confuse that with bat speed, which bat speed is the big buzzword nowadays. Well, launch to contact probably is going to create good bat speed, but it is not the end all that everybody thinks it is. So what is the difference between launch, and launch to contact and bat speed? So let's just take a look at what launch to contact is. If I was hitting off of this tee or somebody was pitching to me, I go into my load situation, boom, and you can see the back of my bat has loaded up here, I've got my wrist cock. As soon as this bat starts making its move in this circular pattern would be the beginning of the launch cycle. And obviously then the contact is the contact point. And for all the calculations that we do so that we can equalize and compare people, we always put the contact point at about the mid of the uh, front foot. That's kind of a pitch right down the middle of the plate. That's your normal contact place. So we just uh, equalize any of our timing and recordings there. So again, the launch cycle starts after load, our separation, okay, and as soon as this bat makes any kind of a positive move to its rotational circle or arc, okay, and then ends at contact. So. Um, we think that's really, really important that the shorter that time is on launch to contact, the longer as a hitter you get to look at and track the pitch that's coming to you. Okay, if you can shorten up your launch to contact time, you get longer to judge speed, location, ball movement, all of the things that are so important in hitting. Okay, versus if I was just going to focus on bat speed and I wanted to generate a lot of bat speed, well, I'd go back into my old slow pitch hitting days. I'd get way back here somewhere and really crank up. But from way back here, it takes me about a day and a half to get to the ball. Well, I'm going to generate some massive bat speed, and slow pitch hitters have the highest bat speed of anybody in the sport, whether it's baseball or fast pitch or what have you. Okay, but it takes them longer to get to the ball. So that type of a swing will not work in fast pitch softball. It won't work in baseball. Okay, so your concentration, I believe, should be on your launch to contact time. Well, how do we measure launch to contact time? Well, here at Polygirl, we use uh, high-speed cameras. Okay, we measure um, our swing at 300 feet or frames per second. That's pretty fast. Your normal home video camera measures at 30 frames per second. So at our 300 frames per second, we can get very precise in our measurements, okay? And we're measuring a distance from release of the pitch to home plate. And in fast pitch softball, that's basically about 39 feet. By the time the pitcher's, you know, done her normal push and drive off the mound and let go of the pitch, the ball's about 39 feet from home plate. And in fast pitch softball, that pitch is going to take about 0.43 of a second from release until it gets to the front of home plate. Okay, so those are kind of the, the basic measurements that we use, and we use that to uh, come up with what we think is the most important measurement of all is how far in front of home plate is that ball when you have to initiate your launch. Okay? So let me just tell you what uh, typical distances are. For your 12 and under kids, their ball is probably 25 feet out in front of home plate when they start their launch. Uh, a decent 16 and under hitter, the ball is probably about 20 feet in front of home plate when they have to initiate their launch. You got up an 18 year old category, and an average would be about 18 feet in front of home plate. Well, now let's go up to the college level where we start really, uh, you know, getting some 
pretty high level hit hitters. The average there was probably around the 16 to 16 and a half foot in front of home plate when they have to launch their bat. Okay. Well, let's go another level up and talk about the ladies that play in National Pro Fast Pitch. Their ball, before they have to start their launch, is about somewhere between 14 and a half, maybe as much as 16 feet in front of them. Okay. The best I've ever measured happens to be Megan Wiggins, who is on our hitting video. Megan doesn't have to start her launch until the ball's 12 and a half feet in front of her. What an advantage. Her swing is so efficient. Her bat speed is phenomenal. 12 and a half feet in front of her. She gets to look at that pitch longer than anybody. That's probably why she leads the NPF in hitting by a wide margin. Okay, so launch to contact, really important. So, well, what can I do short of going out and buying a you know $2,000 camera? Well, here's what you could do. You could use a little device that uh, we really think is great. It's called an AcroSpeed. And I'm gonna take this little device and I'm just going to uh, strap it onto my wrist here and kind of show you how this thing, you know, works and what kind of feedback it can give you. So this little device works on centrifugal force. So anything that's moving in any kind of a circular fashion, like your lead arm and hitting, creates a centrifugal force. This is going to give you a feedback. It's going to give you an audible feedback, so I think you'll be able to hear this if I just try to demo it here without even doing a swing, just to mimic a swing. You can hear that audible feedback that this gave me that, wow, I created some really good centrifugal force there. That was a pretty nice long, what we call, chirping action. Well, what we would do is we would turn this up a little bit, okay, and see if we can find out where is it on this scale have we reached that maximum centrifugal force that uh, we get feedback on? So I turned it up a, a pretty good bit here. I'll do it again. Still got a chirp, so I can turn it up even more and we'll see if I can get it again. Still got it, so I'm still generating some pretty good centrifugal force. So I'm gonna move it up again and see what happens here. Get it yet, so uh, this is telling me that I'm doing a pretty good job of getting some rotation here. So we'll move it up again one more time. Just got a short little chirp. So I'm getting really close to reaching um, kind of my maximum that I can generate with uh, you know, rotation. Okay, so what you would do is uh, try to increase the setting that you can get an audible chirp from on the acro speed. Um, so if I crank this up a little bit more and I'm going to take a, and make a swing off of here and see if I can make this thing chirp. Okay, boom, here we go. Ah, I went up high enough that I didn't get an audible. So that means that, that um, I've exceeded the measurement for my maximum rotation. So we'll try one more and see if I can get an audible here. Still didn't get it. So as I move this down, I'm going to find out where I'm at. I'll go down just for uh, brevity's sake here, see if I can't uh, get it down to where we get an audible. I'll go one more time. Okay, got just a little chirp, so we'll just go one more down and we'll make that a little bit louder. And here we go. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is increase the speed with which I rotate. Okay, so in uh, swing mechanics, probably the two most important things to be able to increase your launch to contact time would be how fast can your core torque or how fast can you rotate? Okay, and then the second thing would be how well do you stay connected, meaning course your upper lower torso here and your hands to your shoulders because it's really your shoulders that are going to create that rotation of your hands okay so um, 
drills that you would do uh, would have things to do with increasing the speed with which your core rotates or torques. And just for uh, demo's sake, I can show you one simple little one. We sometimes use a short bat, okay, and we put a nice box into our uh, setup here. And we're going to do two things. We're going to rotate as fast as we can, okay, and we're going to try to stay connected here with the hand and the back shoulder here. So we would do something like this, and we would rotate as fast as we could, and try to stay connected as long as we could so we don't get any flaws in our swing. So one more time would be here. Okay? So again, rotating fast, staying connected, and after you do some of those with your short little bat, go back to your regular bat, and do everything you can to rotate fast and maintain connection right here. So it would be something like this. And what you're trying to do is to be able to increase the setting on this and still get, you know, an audible feedback. So um, that'll uh, tell you a lot um, as far as am I increasing my launch to contact time, okay? And on the contrary, you can do some things that are negative. Like, for instance, you could see that you won't achieve... Um, much of a chirp at all, if any, if you do some of the old drills that used to be done. For instance, you know, the, how many times have you seen somebody practice their swing with the knob to the bat, a real linear fashion? Well, that's not going to create any kind of speed of rotation at all on your bat. So we want to never do anything that's linear or any kind of a drill like that, okay? Or what if we do something like this? We go out and we boom, cast out and around the ball. Okay, well, out here is going to be a slower rotation. Okay, so disconnecting from the shoulder out here would not be good, okay? Another thing would be sort of like a slow pitch player, and that would be getting way back here with your load. Now you've got to make up all of this time and distance here before you really get into your rotation. So, um, those are a couple little things. Uh, maybe one more would be, I know you've seen lots of kids that go up to bat, and I'll turn this way for camera's sake, and you'll see them in their bats almost flatter than a pancake. Okay, so they're going to actually push through their swing rather than being cocked and loaded and a rotation through the swing. So, um, again, this little device, the AcroSpeed, will give you the feedback that you need to tell you if you're increasing or if you're decreasing your rotation and if your mechanics are good as far as things like connection. So we'll just try one more and see if we can really rotate this and make it really chirp. And you can hear it chirp really well right there. And that's the whole idea is, you know, let's say that setting I had was um, like a 1C. So I'll move it up a couple letters on the scale. Now can I make it chirp again? That's the idea. Get my rotation, get my connection, and make it go. And I was able to get another nice long chirp. So I'll move it up three or four letters, kind of challenge myself a little bit, and see if we can make this thing chirp again. And again, I'm really trying to rotate. I'm trying to maintain my connection and really increase my launch to contact. And I was able to do it. So, um, great little tool, great feedback. Okay, so uh, get yourself an accurate speed and work on your launch to contact. Don't worry about your bat speed. It'll come with good launch to contact. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope you enjoyed this little demo. I think it's important that you know how the uh, AcroSpeed actually works and how you can adjust it. Uh, basically, the AcroSpeed is going to measure centrifugal force, so the faster that you spin uh, the AcroSpeed, whether it be on your arm or on your leg or whatever, um, it's going to measure the centrifugal force created by that circular motion. And the faster that you can spin something, uh, the more centrifugal force that you've created. 
So with the accuracy speed, if you'll look at the little picture here, you'll notice that we've got a vertical scale that's numbered 1 through 7. Those are our major adjustments. So somewhere between 1 and 7, you're going to find that um, you're going to reach what we would call your maximum centrifugal force, which is kind of what we're trying to measure here. Okay, now if you look at the little dial that's facing you, it's got letters A through H. And that little dial is our fine measurement. So I can turn that dial clockwise, which requires me to increase the speed of my rotation, or it's going to measure higher centrifugal forces. Okay, or I can turn it counterclockwise and decrease uh, the requirement for a circular motion or we're going to measure lower uh, centrifugal forces. So anywhere between any one of these numbers we can dial, a, a, for instance, a 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, 1F, etc. to get uh, the real fine-tuning that we need for any particular skill level of athlete or the different uh, exercises or drills uh, that we might be doing, for instance, overhand throwing or underhand pitching or swinging a bat. So an infinite uh, number of adjustments here and very, very easy to do. So uh, again, uh, Acura Speed, a uh, great little tool. Okay, so I've got up another little uh, picture here of the Acura Speed just to give you an idea of where you can go to buy this little device. You can go to uh, www.acrospeed.com or www.polygirlfastpitch.com. Uh, both of these websites have an online store, so you can uh, purchase it there. Um, and uh, we don't want you to forget to go to YouTube to look at some of the training videos that will really show you how to use this tool and improve your game. So if you go to YouTube and type in Acrospeed Trainer, then you'll get all the little drills that uh, you could possibly need to uh, elevate your game uh, to the next level. And this is just, uh, you know, again, from Polygirl Fast, but one of the finest little tools that uh, we've ever really uh, run into.